Good day guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Mikey. Today it's a beautiful Saturday morning here in Freetown, Sierra Leone. And as usual, we usually have a money talk or discussion as we move ahead. From our previous discussions or classes about insurance, so many people are questioning that we don't pay claims. The insurance companies in Sierra Leone don't pay claims. Well, I am an insurance officer, but not a claims person. I have with me today one of the claims officer, one of the claims officers at the Reliance Insurance Trust Corporation. Great Cup, the company that I'm working as we are doing our morning work. He will be telling us today what is claim in insurance, what does the claims department does, and what the processes that are involved in doing claims in Sierra Leone. Good morning. Mr. Kamar, I will say. Yes, good morning. Yeah. Mr. Mike Yeah, I will mean, this is your first time in my channel, not so. Yes, of course. Okay, so you are welcome to my channel. And as you have had me mention that, so many people are questioning that if we do pay claims, insurance claims in Sierra Leone. Are we paying claims in Sierra Leone? Yes, of course, we are paying claims. That is part of our business. Insurance is part of claim settlements, so we usually pay claims as and when policyholder make a claim to us. So we usually pay claims as and when a policyholder make a claim to us. So in the first place, what is a claim? Claim now when a policyholder um um if the insured pays. Let me say, what is the insured period? What you are actually insured for? If the incident arises, you, you have to expressly notify the insurer that the incident that I have insured for has actually arise for the insurance to come on board and pay. You have to expressly notify them in writing. Okay, so express, expressively, yeah? Yeah. So let's say, let's break it down. You yeah. have mentioned peril. Not everybody will know what is peril. Okay. So let's say I insured my vehicle. My, yes. And, and I involved in an accident. Yes. What will I do? The first thing that you need to do, as I earlier told you, that you need to expressly notify us as insurer yeah. in writing that you have involved in an accident and that you need to give us further details of the circumstances of the accident after which we have to go to the scenes and inspect to verify the accident so that that is the first process in claims handling okay so i have to express in writing and you have to go and inspect and do your investigation. Yeah, do my investigation. Okay, so we are coming to the investigation and inspe inspection aspect. But you are working at the claims department. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Actually, our role in the claims department is to ensure that when policy holder make claim, we are able to compensate, indemnify them based on the type of policy that they, they have with us. Okay. In line with the insurance contractual term, that is what we are doing in the claim department. That is investigating claim, make payment. That is some of our activities in the claim department. In the claim department. Yep. Okay. So um, I was discussing one day. I was telling people about motor insurance, and yeah. that the most popular insurance in Sierra Leone. Yeah. That's what many people are taking. So, um, many people don't know how to make motor insurance claim. 
in Sierra Leone and so many people are saying that insurances in Sierra Leone are not paying claims. So what is the process that are involved in making motor insurance claims in Sierra Leone? That one is the most easy claim. Motor insurance is the most easy claim? Yeah, that we usually have almost every day. Okay. Some of the processes that are involved, the first thing, you, as I told you earlier, that you need to expressly notify the insurer in writing mm -hmm. about the incident. After which, the insurer will have to go and inspect. After inspecting the 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 accident vehicle, mm -hmm. they will request it for requisite claims document. That is police document, vehicle examiner's report. So all of those things have to be um, compiled by the insured. Give it to the insurer for the insurer to ascertain the extent of the claim. After which, we go into the claims um, settlement for which we have to pay. And in making a, in making a claim payment, there are three processes that are involved. We have one, repairs. We can opt to do repairs for the accident vehicle. Secondly, we can also opt to make payments to the client for the accident vehicle. And thirdly, we can opt to, to replace that is indemnification, replace the motor vehicle that was involved in an accident, provided that it is a total loss. Okay. When there is a case of total loss, we have to replace the vehicle. So that is the three options that we need to make claims payments. You know, I have a particular person in my comment section that is challenging me that it is not possible for us to replace someone's vehicle when there is a total loss. Okay. The only way that we can replace someone's vehicle, someone has to be qualified as a policyholder. Not only a policyholder, but having a comprehensive insurance cover. Okay. When you have a comprehensive insurance cover, then it's like if your vehicle involved in an accident, if it's totally damaged beyond repair then as insurer, we have to replace that vehicle for you. And in replacing it, we have to look for the, the same kind. The same kind and the... the you mean like the, like the same model? The same model, the same make. We have to replace it back to you. That is to put you back in your former positions where you are before the claim. Before the claim. That is what we call indemnification. Okay, so you just mentioned that we are only replacing vehicles that are involved in total loss. But those vehicles... So you mentioned that we are only replacing vehicles that are involved or that are in total loss. Yes. But only those vehicles that are covered comprehensively. Comprehensively and third party fire and theft. Third party fire and theft. Yeah. Okay. For the case of third party fire and theft, it means that when the insured vehicle involved in an accident, we are in, as a result of fire, the vehicle totally burns down. So in that case, we can replace it for third party fire and theft. Okay. So what about in the case of the vehicle being stolen? Secondly, if the also back, if the vehicle being stolen, we can, if at the end of the day, police investigations reveal that the vehicle can no longer be, um, be recovered, then as insurer, we have to pay that claim. Okay, so let's continue by working. Um, in your earlier statement, you mentioned some of the documents that must be tendered for us to proceed with the claims payment. Yes. And so what about if an insured fail to submit some of those documents, what will the insurer do? Well, basically those documents, they are requisite claim documents. One just have to um, complete them for us to make payment. You have to provide those documents to us. That which, that, that's what will give us the authority to, to pay you. Okay. Right. Wow. So without those documents, no payments will be made? No, basically no payments will be made unless the insurer 
have to look at it from um, have to be magnanimous enough. Looking at the circumstances, look at if those documents cannot be obtained at that particular point in time, then we can waive our rights and make payment without those documents. But at least you must have 50 or 60 percent of those documents for us to make payment to you. Okay. Well, wow. well, that's good. And most times, when making claims, I've heard about fraudulent claims. Mm -hmm. So, how you as a claims officer usually distinguish between a fraudulent claim and a genuine claim? It's easy to distinguish between a fraudulent and a genuine claim. That is why when um, the incident of loss arrived, the insured has to expressly notify the insurer, after which the insurer will go further to do an investigation as to the circumstances of the law. That is why we are requesting for those documents. When those documents are provided to us, we have to verify them. We verify those documents. How do you verify them? For like, let's say like um, police report, we have to contact the police who, who, um, who provided that report for them to verify that this report is authentic. That is one. For like medical also, medical reports, when you give us medical reports, we will have to go and contact the doctor who issued that um, medical doctor's report for them to verify that they are the ones that issue that medical report. Okay. And on your earlier submission also, you have spoken about um, the third party property damage. Hmm? Yes. So what about third party bodily injury and death? How does an insurance claims officer handle that one? Yes, sorry. Um, I meant by uh, how do we handle as an insurance claims officer? How do we handle bodily injury and deaths in a motto claim? Well, in handling um, bodily and death injury claims, this is a requirement that every people flying on the road must have a third party insurance cover. Okay. That cover is for is to ensure that pedestrians who are passing the road must be covered for death and bodily injury as a result of using your insured vehicle. So if that be the case, if you expressly notify us as insurer for the incident of bodily injury or death of the third party, it is, it is our responsibility, it is our responsibility to indemnify that victim who was involved in that accident. That's only if they inform us that a third party was involved. Yes, okay. that is the case. After which we have to engage the third party. After en engaging them, that all has to be done after the third party has fully recovered from the injury. Then we can engage them in discussion to see how we can compensate them. Okay. So what about in the time of death? In the case of death, the same things apply. But there are required documents okay. that you need to provide. You need to provide for like death, you need to um, provide the death certificate and the cause of death certificate. Okay. The burial permit for us to verify that that person actually died as a result of the accident that you are claiming for. Okay. Then wow. for injury, mm -hmm. you, we have to request for medical doctor's report for which we will have to verify if actually the incident occurred after your claim. Okay. So that basically the most common form of insurance in Sierra Leone, which we call motor insurance. And you have had the processes that are involved in making a motor insurance claim. So if you are doubting that 
if insurance companies in Sierra Leone are paying claims, yes, we do pay claims, and there are processes involved. Most times, these people don't want to go to the police and have police reports. But for you to make a insurance claim, especially Motu, you have to have a police report. If there is injury or death involved, there must be a medical report, doctor's report. So um, that's one basic aspect of insurance claims, that is Motu insurance. We do have so many other classes of insurances. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. So, a part of Moto. A part of Moto. Which other class of insurance that is more technical in dealing with claims? Well, in dealing with claims, one of the most technical areas that one has to look at is that of injury claim. Injury claim. Yes. We have like um plus liability. A plus liability. We have workmen compensation. Mm -hmm. Those are all complex claims. Okay. As I was saying that making claims under general accident, because we have what we call general accident. General accidents basically involve fire. Burglary. Fire insurance, burglary insurance, professional indemnity. We have group personal accident insurance. We have um, workman compensation. All of those insurance they fall under the general accident insurance. Okay. So um, our main question here is that if someone an employer takes an employer's liability insurance for his employee and that employee is involved in an accident outside the working hours is it covered well for what policy for like what employer's policy? liability, employer's liability. Mm -hmm. in the case of employer's liability no, I can say no. If the incident happened outside the work hours okay. of the, the insured employee, then there will be no cover. The cover must exist when when the insured, as a result of doing the work of the of the insured, then the employee involved in an accident that may lead to death or body injury of that employee then we are coming in as an insurer okay so it is only covered during the working hours that of the employers that 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 is the insured yeah so that means there is difference between employers liability and group personal accidents yes for like um group personal accident basically it covered the employee let me say like 24 hour it is to 24 hour cover okay we are in whether the uh, employee is at work or the employee is at home they are always covered under group personal accident insurance it differ from that one of employer's liability or workmen's compensation okay um, well that's nice <laughs> so, so as you see, there is difference between employer's liability and group personal accidents. Group personal accident is sort of 24 hours covered. Cover. Yes, that is between whether you are at work or you are at home, you are covered yeah. under the group personal accident. accident. And so, do we have exclusion despite it is a 24 hours cover? Do you have any exclusions? Yes, of course, there are exclusions. One exclusion is like um, self inflicted injury. Okay. If you deliberately injured yourself, 
with the aim of um, making clean. In those circumstances, we cannot play because it, it is an exclusion under the policy. Okay. So, we are coming to the end of this interview, but I will be coming with Mr. Lusan Kamar time to time to explain various classes of insurance claims. How we do handle various classes in terms of the claims aspects. So thank you once more for watching. If you have any question, put it on the comment section and I will refer again to Mr. Alusain to answer those questions. Please do me a favor by liking this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not yet joined the family. Love you and want to say bye-bye.